Okay, so welcome back to another Bitwig tutorial. And in this one, we need to talk about the envelope follower and uh, what it is. So an envelope follower is uh, something that listens to something and creates an envelope out of that something. I know, a little bit confusing, but I'm just going to show you and it's going to be a piece of cake. So cut your back. So I'm going to show you right here, have some chords. I'm going to go and play it. That's the sound we get from this synthesizer. There is no reverb, no nothing right now. Of course, you, you need to disregard all of this. This is part of the patch. Now, if I add a little bit of reverb, it's just gonna sound a little bit better because we have some depth. Now, what I want to do, I want to do some kind of a motion on this reverb every time that we, uh, you know, hear the sound coming out of this synthesizer. Now, we could do it with an envelope, with an envelope because this is a MIDI instrument. We can listen to that MIDI and create an ADSR and create some more controlled movement. But sometimes, you know, you want to do something else. You want to create something that is a little bit less controlled. So that's going to be the envelope follower. So I'm going to go and bring the envelope follower right here. So notice as soon as you bring it, you get this symbol. This means audio. This element, this modulator will listen to the audio. What audio? Whatever that comes out from this synthesizer, which is the sound that we are listening without the reverb. All right. So this is going to listen whatever comes out from here and it will generate an envelope. Notice that is moving. All right. So this is the envelope that is generating. Now, the sound that is coming out from this one, it's not super large. And sometimes that's going to happen. So right here you have the gain control. So the gain control will just, you know, say, you know, feed more to the envelope follower. And of course, it's going to start generating a much more, uh, you know, just a better envelope. Maybe we could do 10. So then, of course, we are generating this envelope and you have this controls rise and fall. But I'm going to explain this in a minute. So now, of course, we, ha we have an envelope generated by the sound of this synthesizer. So what we can do, we can use this modulator to, uh, you know, modulate something. So maybe I want to go up on the mix, up on the width, and maybe up on the late mix and up on the time. I don't know. I'm just, you know, just throwing things out here. And notice that the envelope, the envelope generated right here, it's doing its job. Now, then you have this controls, and this depends on the sound that it's feeding to this, you know, envelope follower. And the rise and the fall is like an attack and kind of a decay control, or let's say uh, an attack and release for, you know, like, a, like a, a compressor. So if I go to the rise and I do nothing, notice that the peak, the initial transient of the envelope, it's very, very sharp. And that's how, of course, it's going to behave right here. It's going to go very sharp. Now that you have the fall. Now notice that after the transients, we have a lot of peaks and, you know, they go up and down, up and down until, of course, we go down. And this is because, again, it's listening to the sound and the sound, the waveform that this sound is generating is just like this. You know, we have an audio rate. We have an audio. So the fall is like the decay, how smooth is going to be this going down. If I go to nothing, notice that the decay, it's, you know, not smoothing anything. If I go to the fall, this is going to smooth the transition of going down. Notice that now we have a more kind of a linear envelope. Now, if you go too much, like a decay, it will just never go back. It's just gonna stay up there. And this is, you know, showing right here. If I go and do too much, it's going up and staying right there. So you need to use the rise and the fall to just shape the envelope to something, you know, something you want. And that's how it works. Now, of course, the sound that feeds into the envelope follower is important. If I go right here to the synthesizer and I bring a modulator, I'm going to go and activate, have this ready for you. Notice that the uh, right here. The, uh, the cutoff is going up and down, up and down. So the sound now is going to change. So the envelope is going to change as well. Notice how crazy it's going. And of course, this is going to change how the envelope moves right here. 
And that's why, you know, this is different from like a, just a regular ADSR. The ADSR is just gonna go up, um, you know, do attack, decay, sustain, release, and that's it. But if the sound changes, the envelope changes right here on this one. And we get, you know, we get something more natural, you know, it's moving. The transitioning, you know, the uh, movement, the modulation, it's moving with the sound. I wouldn't say it's better, it's just different. Just a different way of doing things. Now, right now we have the amount that we are going 100%. So you can go down, and if you're doing too much, of course, you're gonna be doing less. It's like a mix or blend control. Now, of course, maybe you made a mistake and you're going up, right? On these values. So if you go all the way down, it's gonna be in negative. So instead of going up, it's gonna go down. And notice, we don't see the envelope right here because you're just going down and it's going down, you know, like that. But it, we can see it right here on the modulation. All right, I'm gonna go up because it's just a much, much more visual example. All right, so then you have the peak and the RMS. Now I'm not gonna explain what peak and RMS is, uh, is but I'm gonna just, Tell you just give you an example so peak uh, is the way we calculate or we just you know uh, for example that we see right here so the peak is the volumes all the transients that go down and it's calculating the peak maximum peak of each one and the rms is like a, a calculation of all the different peaks in a certain amount of time and it's kind of a getting a percentage of that and that percentage is going to be the value that it's going to generate the envelope. So a peak is going to be a much more kind of a sharp and uh, sharp and pronunciated envelope. And the RMS is going to be a bit smoother. Now, if you want to know how peak and RMS go to YouTube, you know, just type peak and RMS and you can have, there are a lot of videos explaining how peak works and how RMS works. Okay, so let me take you to a different example. I have a kick and a snare right here. So it is super dry kick and snare, just super dry. So I'm gonna go and bring a little bit of reverb, just a little bit of reverb, not too much. All right, so we are getting a little bit of reverb. Now, uh, of course, what we can do, we can use the envelope follower. Now the envelope follower, uh, we, uh, we were using it on a MIDI track, right? We were listening to the audio that comes out, but it's a MIDI track. Now, of course, since this is an audio, it's going to be listening to whatever you have on the track. In this case, is the kick and snare. So as soon as I play it, notice that it's following or it's just, you know, giving us the, the read of the transients of the kick and the snare right here. So we are getting that envelope. Now, if you want a little bit more, uh, let me just do it with shift, maybe around there. So we get all of this and, you know, it's really cool. Of course, if I go, and since this is very sharp because it's a kick and a snare, and it's a very sharp kick and snare, of course, you're going to get sharper and sharper envelopes. Now, you could use this to, again, provide a little bit of motion, just like we did with the chords. So I'm going to go, I'm going to stop this first, and I'm going to go maybe to the mix, just a little, something like that, and I'm going to go to the width, and I'm going to go to the late mix, maybe. And again, I'm going to do the same example. So as soon as I play it, notice that it's not a super aggressive change in sound, but if I turn this off, you're going to notice it. Now, of course, you need to listen to this on a good, um, some good headphones or maybe some good monitors. So the main difference is the movement. Right now, when we turn this off, uh, it's very static. We can we can hear the kick and snare and the reverb, and the reverb is doing its job, but it's very static. It's always the same. Now the envelope forward, just adding a little bit of something to some of the uh, you know some of the settings right here, some of the controls is going to provide that uh, sense that it's moving, and we're just you know you know moving the knobs just a little bit. And of course, static. and a little bit of movement. Now in mixing and producing, of course, movement, it's very important because it's gonna give you the illusion that the tracks is evolving. It's just moving up and down with the groove. 
And in this case, with the kick and the snare, that's why I'm, uh, I, uh, you know, I'm choosing to put a kick and snare. It's because it has a groove, right? Kick, kick snare, kick snare. So we, we can feel the groove. So since this is a groove, this is going to move along with the groove and it will enhance that, you know, uh, sense of that this track is moving. Because without it, it's just very dry. Now, of course, this is completely up to you and depends on the track that you're working with. Because maybe a dry kink and snare is just a little bit better for your track because you have a lot, you know, some other things that occupy a lot of space. So you don't need the kick and the snare to have this depth and this movement. But, you know, the envelope folder can help you to provide a little bit of movement. And that's very important in mixing and producing. All right. So that's, you know, how the envelope follower, follower works. And that's what it is. It's going to listen to the audio rate of something uh, and generate an envelope based on that audio, uh, not audio rate, it's going to listen to the audio and then generate uh, an envelope based on that audio. And then we can use it to, to do some modulation. It's pretty simple. All right, so hopefully you like this. You uh, learned something on this one. Remember, of course, to like and, like and subscribe. That's how we keep the lights on. And remember, of course, to check Patreon, right? I have a lot of things on Patreon and I'm just uh, publishing uh, more things on Patreon every single month, right? So see you on the next one.